get ahead of myself Feeling things I never felt It's kinda hard for me to explain Personality and everything Brings me to my knees oh, She shines me up like gold on my own I wanna take it slow but it's so hard to see your face in daylight It's more than just our bodies at night She's really tempting me, oh Do you think I'm being foolish If I don't rush in? I, I, I'm scared to death that she might be it the love is real, that the shoe might fit She might just be my everything And beyond, beyond the Space and time and the afterlife Will she have my kids? Will she be my wife? She might just be my everything And beyond Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out Beyond by Leon Bridges. Man, that guy can write a song and what an amazing voice as well. Uh, it's a relatively easy song to play, but it does require a B minor bar chord. We're going to be playing it with capo fourth fret. It's mostly A, B minor, a little bit of D, a little bit of E chords in there. There is a way of playing it with the capo up on the sixth fret and using only open chords, but I think that you lose some of the character of the song and there's a couple of like fills and things that don't kind of quite sound right with that capo position so i'd recommend this as a, a great song for anyone who's just getting started off with a b minor chord or who just wants to play a great tune so let's get to a close-up and check it out okay let's start off with a quick look at that little intro lick just because it's relatively easy and quite tasty it's this it's just a kind of an a major pentatonic -y kind of lick we start with the first finger uh, barring the thinnest two strings at the ninth fret that's five frets above the capo we play those two strings and then hammer the third finger down the 11th fret of the second string. Lift off the third finger and play those two thinner strings again. Then just play that same note at the 11th fret with the third finger. Then third finger is going to move down or up a string and slide down to the 8th fret. Then we play the 6th fret, that's two frets above the capo, with the first finger, 8th fret, 6th fret again. Then we play the open A string. While we play that open A string, it gives us a chance to form our A open A chord, which is the first chord that we need for the song. The rhythm of that lick is starting on the and after two. So you'd have one, two, and three, and four, E, and a. And then we're into the A. Okay? One, two, and three, and four, E. So here now we're into the kind of the main riff which we use for the verses as well. It's simply an A chord. Obviously lots of different ways of playing A. You might like to play it like that. That's some people play it like that, some people play it like that. I would recommend uh, this fingering for an A chord most of the time, but if you want to choose a different one, it doesn't make that much difference. But we do need our sus4. And I would recommend keeping that thinner string open. It's one of those things that gives it a bit of character. It's that clash. And the little sus is happening on beat four in the first bar. So the strumming is one, two, three, four, E and a one, two, three, and a four, E and a one, two, three, four, E and a one, two, three, and a four, E and a one. So basically the first bar and the uh, third bar, the sus goes right on beat four. On the second and fourth bars, it goes down a little bit earlier, but it's not super consistent. So we have one, two, three, four, E and a one, two, three, and a four, E and a one, two, three, four, E and a one, two, three. Bursting out ahead of myself, feeling things I never felt. Staying on the A chord for four bars. Personality and everything B minor Two bars That repeats that whole section again 
go through that verse again there so it's four bars of a two bars of b minor all of that's repeated another four bars of a two bars of b minor there's two bars of e now usually if i'm playing it i play one two three this is a little lick that you can hear on the record it's really lovely so just from the e just lift out the fingers first i'm playing the first finger there one fret above the capo second finger goes down one fret higher than it and third finger goes underneath on the thinner string. So E. And then you slide all of that up two frets. It's another part of a, another way of playing an E chord using a D shape actually, but. Very, very common little, little lick. In this case. Okay, and then it goes back to the D. Yeah, let me do, give it a little sing through. So we're going. Don't want to get ahead of myself. Feeling things I never felt. Don't be fussy about where you put the sauce down. As long as it's at the end of every bar, it's a pretty B minor. You can do a little hammer there with the first finger, the uh, second finger. Back to the edge, it's like a gold on my Wanna take it slow, but it's so hard Still on the A in daylight It's more than just our bodies It's B minor She's really tempting me, oh E The climb lick Do you think I'm being foolish If I de-rush in? Chorus is back to the A with the sauce And it won't be real that the shoe might fit It's another four bars on the A and beyond Then it's two bars of B minor Three, four, three, two, she be my wife Back to A and then everything beyond Then we're on to the next verse It's the same thing Just a one bar there Sorry, one time to be minor It's really tempting me And then it's straight to the E Do you think I'm being foolish If I de-rush in? Ah, ah, and then it's back to the chorus With the little sauce four And the A chord there There's just four bars a chord death continuing for four bars B minor in the afterlife We just fed my kids Will she be my wife? Back to A for two bars there and beyond Now at that point we get to the bridge which is a completely different set of chords including a kind of an interesting one which is a G with an A bass a quick playthrough of the bridge first, and then I'll go through and explain it. So we've got. I give up, I'm in love, crying. Oh, me, oh, my, I can't explain. She might just be my everything. Oh, me, oh, my, she can't explain. She might just be my everything. Oh, me, oh, my, I can't explain. She might just be my everything. I'm being foolish if I don't rush in Just like the end of the pre-choruses and back in And we're back to the chorus again Okay, so this bridge First chord, commonly called a G with an A bass So it's basically thinnest five strings Not playing the thicker string So you might want to mute that just with the edge of your thumb That's one bar and then to 
to a D with an A bass. So regular D chord, but having the A note on the bottom. So one, two, three, four, D with an A bass. Three, four, A, G, D. Two, three, four. This D chord is pushed. One, two, and two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. There's the B minor. And then at the E, with the little climb, just the same as what we had uh, just before the chorus every time so far. As far as the strumming goes, there's not really a set pattern here. So two, three, four, maybe one, two, e and uh, three, e and four. It's probably not a bad starting point. Three, e and four. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down. One, two, e and uh, three, e and four. So one, two, This is this push on the D, very, very kind of a key part of the pattern. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, E, and four. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, E, and four. Notice that you keep the hand moving. Three, and four, and one, two, and three, E, and four. That D is held over for the beat one. And two. So one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, e and four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, e and three, e and four. I'd recommend that you try and keep your hand moving all the time. You will sometimes see that I stop, or it looks like I stop, but actually I am very likely to be making a small hand movement there with my hand anyway. When you play in a tune like this, the strumming is often something that people struggle with because it isn't a set pattern like you might have for I don't know, Wonderwall where there's a very specific pattern that relates to the song. In something like this, you just really want to focus on keeping your hand moving consistently all the time. That gives you that freedom to be able to play less or more without it kind of getting in the way. You're not having to think as much. If the hand's moving for the, for the beginning of the song, you know... You might just play hardly any just to give it a bit of space. It's a ballad, it's a love song. It's not supposed to be like real busy. But keeping the hand moving help keep you in time and keep you confident that if you're gonna strum, that you could do any pattern. If you want, that one kind of sounded a bit weird. But you get the idea that when the hand's moving all the time, I don't even have to think about it, like I'm t talking about teaching the song more than I'm thinking about actually playing it right now. But I know my can hand is kind of doing a consistent thing. Gives you that confidence. And then in the, in the verse, you can, uh, in the chorus, you might bring it up a little bit. Give it a bit of a lift. And when you go back to the verses, you have... But it's all that keeping the hand moving the feeling of it consistent, particularly, you know, on the, on the bridge. That's all free. Now we've got a kind of a set rhythm. Just because it is, it really works as a set thing. That rhythm comes back right at the end of the song as well. But it's a real key feature for a song like this is to feel relaxed and comfortable and keep the hand moving so you've got that confidence to play less or play more and kind of feel it out. Try and feel it in the song so you're not playing the busy parts where the vocals are and that kind of thing. And if, especially if you're playing it and singing at the same time, you'll probably find that it falls together quite naturally as long as you allow your hand to keep moving all the time. Or you train it up. You need to, I was going to say, you allow it to. You need to practice those kind of things so that it happens automatically when you stop thinking about it. About it just like changing gears in the car when you're driving if you've got a manual car or you know stick shift or whatever you have to concentrate when you're learning it but after a little while you just you don't even think about it anymore it's the same with the strumming you want to practice it consistently thinking about it enough that you get to not think about it when you're actually playing for
for real. If you're a fan of Liam Bridges, what other songs of his would you like me to do lessons on? Let me know in the comments. Or you could use the new song request feature over on the website where I'm doing whatever the most requested song is. Every, well, I'm aiming for every week. It might not be every single week, but most weeks. So that could be interesting. I think there's going to be uh, some more hits and some more obscure stuff maybe might make it to the top of that list as well. Uh, if you're struggling with any of the chords, remember there's loads of lessons over on the website. And if you're struggling with any of the rhythm stuff, do go and check out my app, the Justin Guitar Lessons and Songs app uh, for Android and iOS. But it's, it's like loads of guitar karaoke play along stuff. And when you're playing along with stuff like that, it really helps you keep your timing on because you can't stop and start when there's a backing track going on. So do go and check that out if you're struggling at all with your rhythm. Really hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You'll take care of yourselves. Bye bye.